Hello everybody, so after last week's a bit too deep video, today's video we're just doing a little bit of light fun. A Reddit thread on Ask Reddit called What's an Incredibly American Thing Americans Don't Realize is American? Because you get so deep in your American tunnel, you might not realize that something that you do and take for granted doesn't exist anywhere else. It's kind of fun to talk about. Also today's video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound. You'll hear more about them at the end of the video. So here we go. The top comment, what is one thing that Americans don't realize is just a thing in their country? Eh, free refills, I, I guess, sure. I personally have never been a big fan of free refills because I don't drink soda. I just don't think it's really good. Every once in a while, I will have a cup of soda, but it's so horribly unhealthy, I'd much rather just have water. And I always get weird looks when I get like a free drink at a restaurant. I'm like, I'll have water. And they go, you know, it comes with a soda. And I'm like, yeah, I just don't want one. Ranch. I mean, I do really miss ranch, but also, I don't have to. Listen, I may have left America, but I still enjoy a little Hidden Valley Ranch. This is like one of the tastes of my childhood. Yet all I have to do with this seasoning right here is add some milk and mayonnaise. Oh, this is, keeps for like two weeks in my fridge. I dip my vegetables in it. I throw chicken. Oh my God. Ranch is delicious. It should be worldwide everyone's favorite thing. That's the American, the most American thing I've ever said. Back when I worked at Panera Bread, great restaurant, a customer asked for ranch. We didn't carry it back then. And we informed him, he said, are y'all communists? Currently working at Panera and this is a frequent occurrence. Incredibly American things Americans don't realize is American. I think most Americans realize at this point that prescription drug commercials are very strangely just American. I feel like that's talked about more often. So I think we know, at least most Americans, I think, thanking military people for their service. Yeah, that is, I, I really don't think that's done as often in the UK specifically. It's not like you see someone wearing a beret and you go up and say, thank you for your service. That is pretty much uniquely an American thing. Obviously we're thankful for veterans in different countries and whatnot. I've seen some sh Americans say threads on Reddit in which people have said, can I get my military discount when I'm in another country? What? <laughs> it's, it's so, so I can't. Thanking the military for the service, but then not actually supporting them in a meaningful way. Veteran services, that's, yeah. All right, let's, let's hold up with this next one, okay? We've got handing your credit card to a stranger, having them walk away, swipe it, and bring it back like they didn't just put a down payment on their new house with it. Do you Europeans really think this is something that happens like frequently? If we have a system in which we give our credit card to the server to go swipe it and take our payment, do you not think that would be a thing that happened all the time? And even if it did, do you not realize how much insurance is in place? If you have your wallet stolen, God forbid, you're on the tube and someone just yanks your wallet and they end up buying some KFC and other things, you get all that money back. You just report it to the bank immediately. And also, let's just say someone did swipe and buy a down payment on their house. Really difficult to find who took the card. Maybe the person with the down payment on the house? It just feels like you're not putting one and one together, okay? Obviously, chip and pin is a good thing, but also, this is not a real problem, okay? It's not a real problem. drive through ATMs and everything else. I didn't learn we had drive through liquor stores until later in my life. As a kid, drive through ATMs were really cool. Your mom would pull up to the bank, and if you don't know how these work, essentially, you pull up, they see that you've pulled up, they have a little glass wall so they can like see through, and they're like, hi, uh, is this uh, checking your savings? Are you depositing? Are you, you know, taking money out withdrawal? And then they send this little tube down in a little vacuum tube next to the window of the car, almost like you're at a drive through restaurant. And so you open it up, you put your side check in or any cash that you want to deposit. You put it in, put it in, it goes whoop, sucks it right back out. And then they go, all right, thank you, Christina, whatever your name is. And then if there's a kid in the car, they also send back a lollipop. So that's nice, a little free lollipop. <laughs> it was exciting, it was exciting as a kid, but I'm much more thankful to live in a country that doesn't have many drive through things that instead has walkable things. It's much easier to just go to places that don't look like car hell. So that is a positive. American here. When I studied abroad, I was smiling and friendly to strangers. In London, they looked like I wanted to steal something from them. You know, I was a, I was gonna say that's a bit of a stereotype. Londoners really aren't like that. But then I was thinking if I'm on the tube and there is some guy that I'm looking over and he's just like, I don't trust you. What are you doing? Stop that. I, I, you know, if you want to have a conversation with me, fine. However, 
they're, they're like just looking at me and smiling and I'm a guy, so I'm like not feeling as uncomfortable, but I'm still like, I don't I don't trust what's going on here. I'm a very social person though. Like I'm, if I'm in the lift with you, I recognize you just moved in. I will have a half hour conversation with you outside on your floor because I'm just gonna tell you about the area and hope you like your, I'm a good neighbor, okay? I'm American man and I like to talk. However, on the underground with a random stranger that's not my neighbor, I don't trust you. This guy brings up red solo cups. They are weirdly a unique American thing that growing up, you just assume everyone has red solo cups because you don't look at media from other countries as much, but no, it's weirdly just American. So much so, I don't know if you know this Americans, but when people I know have had American themed parties, red solo cups are a top thing you gotta get. And they're not easy to get in this country. You gotta buy them from one of those expensive old wanky American shops. That's how big a deal they are. The cult of high school slash college sports. You know, I feel like if I tried to describe to you what our pep rallies were like in the high schools that I'd gone to, you would not believe me. Or maybe you would. It is pretty much like high school musical. Like you'd have a half day because about like noon 30, which is a word I'm now going to say, you go to the auditorium, everyone's there in the gym and there's the drums, the marching band, they're going crazy. Everyone's wearing the school colors and it's like, and then the basketball team comes out. Actually for us, I believe it was the football team. Our football team was like the one team. They have the homecoming game. Everyone's supposed to support them. There's even a homecoming parade as in like, Everyone from the town goes to support the high schoolers that have this little float to be like, we're gonna beat Salem this month. And it's like, sure you are, Jimmy. And we, we did beat Salem, so good job, high school. But it's, it's weird because it, it feels so like infectious, the energy, it, even though I didn't give a shit about football, I don't care about much sports or anything. It does feel very exciting when you have everyone all together for the same purpose and they're all just full of energy and chanting and cheerleaders doing all these things. It, it is crazy, especially considering in the UK, people get really excited about when they finally get a chance to sit on a wooden bench. That's, that's the greatest pep that I think a Brit will ever have in their entire educational career. <laughs> Which funny is, if you look in the comments, people are like, he's right. <laughs> Love that bench. It was worth every year looking at those older kids on that bench. Phoenix, I know you're, you're now editing this and you're like, yeah. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> education in the UK, you, you peak when you get to sit on the bench. <laughs> Like at that point, everything else is downhill. Your, your life is just waiting to sit on the bench. You sit on the bench and then it's all downhill from there. Liberal equals left wing. I've definitely been someone who will intermingle those two words because like we only have a two party system and it's very confusing. And I'm like, obviously they're not the same thing, but also in our system, it's like, Daily driving pickup trucks. Yeah, I know that the Ford F-150 is like the most sold vehicle in the States. It's like ubiquitous with American culture, having a pickup truck. And it's weird because like, even if I wanted to get one in the UK, it, it's really difficult. There's a reason why they're not sold here. Th those things are massive and they just don't fit on our roads. And even if they did, finding a parking spot where that's not gonna get dinged up is going to be next to just impossible. Even those small little country roads, if you're in the south or the west or the north or the east, all over the place. I can't, oh God forbid, in a city. But no, I'm just thinking about those narrow little roads that are basically one way, but you have to like slowly give uh, yield to the other people. No way. A pickup truck just can't really exist here. Uh, obviously, if you're in like country, maybe, but then you don't really want to drive it too far from the country. <laughs> Sending Christmas cards with your family photo on it. Is that, is that not a thing in other places? I, I think we actually did do that one year, but is that, is that, is that just an American thing? What? No, it, I learned this stuff. What? I mean, I've never been a fan of sending cards. I'll just throw that out there. I find them to be basically a performative act. I'd much rather an actual gift or even just a call or a text. I don't need a stupid little piece of paper that says, hi, I spent $4 to send you a piece of paper or hey, I printed out the family photo. I don't need that. I don't need it. Not making posts about other countries. That's cause there aren't any other countries. This is, that's the American. Paying $10,000 for a live birth and thinking that's okay. Uh, yet again, I don't think Americans think that's okay. I, I think that hopefully, I'm thinking most Americans at this point, due to the internet and being exposed to how every other country exists, might have the wherewithal to be like, hey, that's, 
that's not cool. I hate that this is just a thing. I like that someone said after paying $3,000 a year in insurance and someone said, look at this guy with dirt cheap insurance. I like that I'm just sitting here still with my ranch, just thinking about maybe making some, dipping my fingies in it, eating that up. <laughs> singing the national anthem at every possible opportunity, even in an event that doesn't involve other countries. Well, of course, I feel like it's even better when it's just you. It's you and your bros all singing about America at a sports event, which of course the government infused into sports so that way they can instill nationalism at every part of the American public's psyche. You know, oh, sports, America, America, you gotta love it. Gonna sing about it, it is, it is weird and it is brainwashy. But that's the American way. The only time I have ever heard the British national anthem was when I became a British citizen and I had to listen to it while staring at a portrait of the queen. That was legally what I had to do to get my citizenship. Weird but all right. Mixing three different canned foods together and calling it a casserole. L listen, it's, it's strange, but growing up, my knowledge of cooking was pretty much that, like buying different boxes that say you could just add different things to the boxes and that was cooking. I wasn't good at cooking that, it was basically it. Don't forget to add cheese. Air conditioning, yeah, that was the roughest thing. Moving to the UK, I remember my first summer here and that was the absolute worst part. I was on like the 11th floor of student accommodations and oh my God, was it just sweltering up there. And the worst part is this weird cognitive dissonance where British people seem to pretend like it's not incredibly hot for at least two to three weeks of the year and they go, oh, it's only hot for one or two days, just suck it up and sweat. No, air conditioning is so nice. I don't have it at this flat. I couldn't, I mean, I could put one in for like 300 quid, but that's 300 quid. And then that's just for like one room and it's loud. And uh, 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 I just wish it came standard. Oh, making pancakes from the box. If you've seen my video in which me and my friends compete to make the best pancakes, you will find I made my US pancakes the US way with a box of Bisquick. That was just the way I knew. It was almost like that was the only proper way of making pancakes to me. You gotta use Bisquick. Nowadays, I actually, I'll link the uh, recipe I use in the description. I have made this recipe maybe like 25 times. They are by far the fluffiest, most amazing American pancakes I've ever had. I make them every time and I don't need a box. I feel very proud as an American to say, I don't need a box for pancakes anymore. <laughs> and it's actually a better way. <laughs> Everyone else is making pancakes from scratch. You're right, I didn't know this. See, people, Americans, just like me, I didn't know. I was just like, everyone's gotta use Bisquick. That's like the future. Like we might as well just use Bisquick if it makes them the right way, right? Man, I'm such a slut for marketing. While I admit the Brits are pretty close with their full English breakfast, the American greasy diner, breakfast of eggs, bacon, waffles, pancakes, and hash browns is uniquely American. No. I I, I literally just say pancakes or waffles, but it's pretty much a, a English breakfast with pancakes. Obviously there's no mushrooms or any other healthy things involved and definitely not beans, but is, yeah. someone paid just to bag your shopping at the checkout. Absolutely. Makes me feel so awkward and uncomfortable just standing there while they do it. No, God, do I miss a bag boy. I had one during my road trip in the States in February and oh, it's just, so convenient. You got someone ringing you up and then someone else putting them in the bed. Thank you, sir. You are doing the best service ever. As opposed to that really, really anxious thing of trying to do it yourself and then, oh God, where do I put the apples? Is this soft enough to be in the bottom? Or is it, oh God, there's somebody coming. I, I, I'm sorry. And you can move it to another place. But I don't want to do that. I've got all my stuff right here. Yeah, stresses me out. Is this an American thing? That was one of my first jobs in Ireland. <gasps> Should I move to Ireland? They got bag boys? That's, that's hot, that's hot. Calling a water heater a hot water heater. I would have called it that, but I now just call it a boiler. That's a lot fewer words. Ooh, thinking that circumcision is the norm and that uncut guys have smelly dicks. It is weird that that's just kind of a thing that is just kind of taught. It's like, well, Jimmy, you have a piece of your penis cut off because God and your family love you very much. And also because they wanted it to be clean. Otherwise it gets all stuff in there and gets germs and gross. In fact, you should be thanking your family for cutting off that little bit of your dick. It's totally normal and every other guy has it. Just in the States. 
You know one thing that's not uniquely American? Today's video is sponsored Epidemic Sound, and I'm just gonna give it to you guys plain, all right? Epidemic Sound's been around for ages. I've used them for four to five years before they sponsor my videos, and they're great. They are, allow me to make the videos that I make really nice by having a nice bed of background music, no matter what I'm talking about. It's a giant library, and they want me to talk about my future. I've been asked, tell you guys about their new loyalty program. Initially, for each person you refer, you get one month free subscription to Epidemic Sound, as well as community newsletters and exclusive discounts. But once you pass the 12, people referred threshold, you can join the ambassador program, meaning you get $15 per referral, as well as being able to access the campaign platform to chat with other creators. And just to talk about my future plans for the channel. So, hey, my future plans, I wanna make better videos. That's simple, right? I'm making a big one I've been working on for a while in which I leave my house, make some videos around London. Hopefully you look forward to that and there'll be good music in the background of every single one thanks to Epidemic Sound. So thank you guys, Epidemic Sound. If you want, you can click my link in the description to join and uh, join the referral program. Other than that, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you can watch another one on Reddit somewhere on the screen. And I'll see you guys next Sunday. Goodbye.